Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have Pepperwood. This comes to us from Jim in Pennsylvania. And Jim says, when you cut into it, you'll know why they call it Pepperwood. And sure enough, it smells like pepper. Let's take a look at it. I really love the bark on this. Beautiful, but of course, it came off. But it did come off in one single piece and it fits right back on there. So this will be a turning for another time. What I'm going to do here is use uh, carpenter's glue and spread it all over this, cover the whole thing and I'll clamp this back on there and we'll be good to go. It's a perfect fit still. So that's for another time. Today we have this one, the other half, and the bark was loose on here as well. It wasn't quite as loose. So I put CA all the way around all of the edges, all the way around there. I don't think it'll hold completely. I, I think it will hold enough to where I can get it turned and then repair it as I go. That's my hope. Look at that heartwood. I love that. Very delicate nice color. I bet it uh, brings out some nice dark wood when you put some finish on there. Hopefully we'll find that out. And hopefully the bark will stick with us. I really like it. This is pretty lightweight. I'm guessing it's a soft wood. I haven't done any research on it. It probably won't be difficult to turn. This does look a little punky in the middle there in the heartwood on the on the end, but that doesn't look punky. Might look a little punky over here. But it just doesn't look punky where we care about so hopefully that won't be much of an issue i'm looking forward to giving it a turn i wish it was smell vision because it sure does mm, smells like pepper wood to me so i'm going to take this over here to the drill press i'm going to drill a flat bottom hole in the middle in the middle of that i'm going to drill a 5 16 inch hole for my 3 8 inch woodworm screw we're going to get this mounted up and start turning this is what I've done at the drill press. My clearance hole for my chuck jaws to set against. And then a second hole because the bark sticks up so high so that it'll clear the body of the chuck. So let's see if it fits. And because it's a soft wood, Instead of drilling a 5 16 inch hole, uh, 10 30 seconds, 11 30 seconds, 9 30 seconds, I drilled a 9 30 seconds hole. So 1 30 seconds smaller so that it won't strip out. Okay, that fits very nicely. And we will use tailstock support here for a little while. And I like to let the live center find its own place. So I like to spin the piece up a little bit and then, and then advance the live center. And then we'll bring up the tool rest. We'll probably just start on this corner here. And when you work in this corner, you want to be at about a 45 degree angle. Doesn't have to be exactly 45, but at an angle. And we want to keep the bark on. If we come this way with our chisel, which is the correct way, we'll lift it right off of there. So I'm going to be working from the top side down in an attempt to keep that bark on. To be honest, it's most likely going to come off and that's just going to make me sad. But we'll find out. Let's see what kind of speed we can get. Pretty well in balance. We'll go with about 635 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. You hear that? Big piece just went. Well, right, right from there, I guess. That's okay, that won't hurt anything. I'm gonna be turning that away anyway. So far so good. Scares me to death. I'm taking little tiny bites up this way. Trying to keep that bark on. This is going to finish up beautifully, don't you think? The lighter and the darker and then the, the orange color of the edge of the bark. Going to be pretty nice. Well, 
Well, as soft as it is, it turns kind of hard. I'm going to go uh, sharpen up. The bark seems to be tight. I, I know it's not, but I can get a lot smoother cut going this way than I can going that way. Oh yeah, see, it, it's, it is loose right there. I'm going to put some CA on that. I'll be back. Well, I've got that part fixed pretty well, so I'm going to try a couple of passes this way, smooth it out, and I sure hope it works. I'm also going to step aside for a minute and make sure all that glue isn't going to sling into my face. I believe it's dry, but it might not be. And I wonder if I can pick the speed up any. I will try about 700 RPM. So far so good. Fully round on this end. This end I still have a little flat spot there. Yeah, this is going to be pretty. See if we got that. Yep, both ends are round. I'm going to stop on the side here and come down and work on the bottom so that I can determine where this corner is going to be. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and mark out for a tenon. I'm just laying my pencil across my life center, and that gives me an approximate size. A tenon needs to be a tiny bit smaller than that, and a recess needs to be a tiny bit bigger than that, at least for these 50 millimeter jaws that I'm using. So I think we can probably do away with the tail stock now that it's round. I'm going to switch to a half inch gouge to make the tenon. Or maybe it should be a recess. Uh, yeah, maybe a recess, huh? Okay. I'm with you. Well, that is so soft, kind of tears out a little bit, but we'll figure it out. I do have a recess tool that I'm going to use. It'll put a dovetail on the outside edge of this recess, and that'll fit with my jaws very well. That looks pretty good. And back with my 5 8. And that's looking pretty good. We just about got this done. If that bark stays with us, careful bark, careful, hang in there. I don't think I want to do much more than that. Oh, look at some some pink coming in there. And a cool knot. Boy, see that just that's just a big old hole where it's a soft spot there. Kind of the same over here, not quite as bad. Okay, I'm gonna do some shear scraping, but I need to sharpen my gouge. Well this is just a little too deep to scrape away, so I'm gonna try and cut it away. Well, it's a whole lot better. Now I'll try shear scraping.
Yeah, okay. What do you know? I love it when I surprise myself. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex at 120 grit and then I'll go to 180 grit and that's as fine as I will go. And I'm going to use that just on the bark here. Uh, I know you can't see it but it's, it's, it's there, believe me. And I'm just going to sand about an inch up or so, something like that. I'm going to be turning away most of it, of course, when we get up to the top, but I just, I just want to get my sanding sealer. I think that's what we're going to use, a sanding sealer. I want to get that wrapped over the edge here a little bit so that it's not a, so I don't have a line that I have to protect when I start working on the top side, you know what I mean? So I'm going to sand just, just an inch or so up on the top with the Sandoflex. And when that's done, I'll switch to an 80 grit disc on my two inch sander and I'll sand all the turn parts. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Well, that stands up easier than I thought. Maybe I could have gone with 180 to start with. That's, uh, it's, already, it's already pretty dang smooth. But anyway, I'll do the same thing with 180 grit. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 350. And then I can switch to forward as well. And then I'll just alternate forward and reverse through the grits up to 400. And I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, I changed my mind. I'm going to go with Howard Feed and Wax on this piece. I want to see if the uh, aroma, the pepper smell still comes through. I do have another piece of this, if you remember. And maybe, depending on what this does, maybe we'll use uh, sanding sealer and shellac on that piece. I hope that pink color shows through. Not a lot of it and it's kind of pale, but it's there. Looks like it's going to. This always makes the wood feel so soft. I, I guess soft is kind of the way I like to say it. I'm not sure what that means, but that's the way the wood feels, is soft. Now I'm not going to put any in there because I'll, I'll sign it first and then I'll put it over my signature. So this will just require uh, about a 20 or 30 minute dry time. Then I'll spin the piece up about five, 600 RPM and buff it up a little bit with a rag, clean rag, and a toothbrush in the bark. That's how I buff it out of the bark. And then I'll bring you back here in a bit and we will start working on the inside of this piece. Okay, see you in a bit. I have the piece turned around with the chuck jaws expanded into the recess. We're going to be turning at 780 RPM, half inch standard grind bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Yeah, I'm liking this. And yes, there is a pepper smell, all right. Well, I got those sides cleaned up pretty nice with shear scraping, like this. So I can just keep going deeper. But I, I need to get tool support in here. And this is kind of in my way. I can do it like this, but then I'm not gonna get far. Sort of a sort of a silly waste of time, isn't it? I 
I know I've got a ways to go, but I always like to check, especially when I'm on a recess. Yeah, it's about an inch thick in the bottom, and we want something like a quarter inch. Get cocky, buddy. Quarter inch. Oh, geez, I didn't even have to sharpen. I sharpened before we started, but I haven't sharpened since. I do have a little bump right there. Right there, oh yeah, where that knot is. See that my gouge slipped. My gouge slipped and put a, a, a dip in down here. So now I gotta fix it. That's where you want to be careful. You don't want to be have to fix and stuff when you're already too thin. I could fix it with a scraper, but this wood's kind of soft, and a scraper, in my opinion, just does not do well on soft wood. Got it, got it all. Time for sanding. I'm gonna have the lathe spinning in reverse and then I'll switch to forward. I'm gonna be using a two inch disc at 80 grit working up through 400 and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yes, Phil makes mistakes when you're... <laughs> When you're in reverse, you got to work on this side. Oh my gosh, that was so embarrassing. When you're in reverse, you work over here. When you're in forward, you work over there. My gosh, I'm so embarrassed. And that sure stirs up that pepper smell, I can tell you. Okay, now we're forward. Now you work over there, my gosh. So the lathe is spinning forward, my drill is spinning forward. When it's spinning backwards, my drill is spinning backwards. And don't try and use the whole two inches, it won't work. If you're flat on here, you're gonna get caught when it comes around, it's gonna smack you. Anyway, now that I know how to do it, it'll be pretty easy. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put feeding wax on there. See you in a bit. Well, that was just about too dang easy, wasn't it? And look at that grain, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. Isn't that beautiful? It's got that pink in there. Yeah, this is a very open grain, open grain wood, very soft, but it, uh, a lot of times soft wood won't sand up as nicely as hardwood does, but this is just smooth as can be. Feed and Wax was a good choice for this piece as far as feel, but I'm anxious to see what it looks like with a little more gloss on it. Not a lot of gloss, but a little more like we get with shellac, so... The next one will definitely be shellac. I love that orange bark. We'll see it setting up right here in just a minute, okay? Don't go anywhere. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, wow, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, this was a fun piece for me. It was, it was easy, for one thing. Way easier than I thought it might be. And it finished up just beautifully, don't you think? Isn't that unique? grain and color. 
and and orangish bark and and just a lot to see i really like it and it feels so incredibly smooth and soft just a lot to see here i can't figure out if that's the front or if this is the front i kind of like this a little bit better there's a little more going on here but it looks good from any direction love the knot in there comes right through on this side here i just like everything about it and it's, it's so light so lightweight pepperwood never heard of pepperwood before i still haven't researched it i gotta go do that but i hope you enjoyed the video i really had a lot of fun making it for you and with you and i want to thank jim from pennsylvania for sending this along for all to enjoy if you like this video thumbs up please i'd sure appreciate it if you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.